Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be joyous and be glad in it. We're so happy to have you at Bible study tonight. I try to go not too fast, but I want to prolong the time to get in and out. Make sure you get the word so that you can get back to your family duties or your fellowships that you have now. But you also need the word. As you're settling down at home, hopefully, maybe you're still preparing dinner. Family's preparing for the next uh, achievement or next thing you'll do this night. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and we honor you and we praise you for your word. And we thank you, God, for letting the Holy Spirit be here with us, sending him to teach us, to mold us, to shape us. Have your way in our lives today. Give us a word. This tonight that, that just won't warm our hearts, oh God, but will strengthen our souls. Give us a closer walk with you. Deeper love for our fellow man. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Well, our lesson tonight, we're still thinking about the theme. If you're th still thinking about the theme, let me remind you uh, again, if you're not familiar with it, let me just say it again, that our theme, we've been, think we've been talking about feeling good about life. And tonight, we're going to talk about how to defeat depression. Tonight, we're, we're continuing on in the series. We started some Wednesday nights ago. With, we looked at perfectionism. I you hope you... Got that in your, in, your, in your life and in your heart now. We looked at worry. We looked at anger. Tonight we want to talk about depression. Depression. How do you defeat depression? Our text tonight is taken from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 13, even though I'll be calling out verses surrounding that text. But 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 13, if you have your Bibles, many have said, I was reading that depression is number one in, in health problems in our world. It's been called the common coal of emotional illness. A lot of people are depressed. Everybody gets depressed from time to time. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong you are. You can be super saint. But I want you to know, from time to time, you'll get depressed. Some people... Uh, are depressed all the time. Some people are depressed some of the time, but even great Christians, great saints <laughs> get depressed. In fact, Elijah was such an example. Elijah was a tremendous spokesman for God for years. He had been God's mouthpiece and to the nation of Israel. He had been God's spokesman. All kinds of miracles had taken place through his ministry. There, were, there was a great spiritual awakening happening in the nation right now in our text. And from, and from that nation, they were being brought from previous uh, pagan idol worship, worship of things. But there was one person who did not like Elijah. Many of you read your Bible. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. She was the queen of, of Israel at this time. She was a very wicked woman. You've heard her name before. That's right, Jezebel. Jezebel. Jezebel did not like Elijah because Elijah had a lot of influence. She did not like him. She couldn't stand him. After a great miracle had happened, in the previous chapter, you read before, Jezebel thought, I, I've had enough of that man. And her husband Ahab, who was the king, they both were tired of him. Verse 1 says, Ahab, verse 1 says, Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. This made her mad. Then look at verse 2. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, 
if by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like one of them. So she was saying, if I don't kill you within 24 hours, she said, I'll, look, I'll, I'll be ready to kill myself. Then verse 3, look at verse 3 in your Bible. says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Bathsheba in, in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree and sat down under it and prayed that he would die. He was depressed. I've had enough, Lord. You can see, you can hear Elijah's words. In our text, he said, "Take, take my life. I'm, I'm no better than our ancestors." Why did Elijah get depressed? Well, because he played these mental games that every one of us play when we get depressed. What kind of mental games, Pastor? Well, first of all, we focus on our feelings and not the, the facts. We focus on our feelings and not the fact. Look at the verse 3. Elijah was afraid. He ran for his life. As a result of this, he came to a broom tree. Said, I did pray that he might die. What did he say? I have, I've had enough. I, I, I can't take no more of this. Elijah felt like a Failure because of one little incident. He got afraid and ran. Then, then he started condemning himself. How many of you know you're not down until you're down on yourself? That's, that's called emotional reasoning. And it's wrong. Musicians and athletes and TV stars, they all know that after a performance, you often feel lousy. You feel like... You flopped, but feelings are not always true. Sometimes feelings will lie to you. You don't always feel married, but you are. You don't always feel close to God, but it doesn't mean that you're not. You don't always feel like a Christian, but you, you are. Feelings lie. What else can I say? When you focus more on feelings than the facts, you get into trouble. The Bible doesn't say get in touch with your feelings. No, the Bible says get in touch with the truth. The truth will set you free. The Bible says stand on God's promises. Why do we get depressed? Like Elijah, we focus on feelings more than facts, and then we exaggerate the negative. Look at verse 10. I'm the only one left now. They're trying to kill me, to pour me. Elijah's having a pity party. Everybody is against me. God, don't nobody like me. Oh, they're all trying to take me out. The fact is, everyone was not against him. Read your Bible. There, there was only one person, one woman. And her threat, was you could say, was an empty threat. It, if Jezebel had really intended to kill him, she wouldn't have sent a messenger. She would have sent a hitman. If Elijah would have... Just thought about it, not listen to his feelings. Look, verse 2 says Jezebel sent a messenger. So she didn't want to kill him. She just wanted to, to, to take away his influence. She, she just, she, she didn't want to kill him because he had too much influence. I mean, the people would respond with a riot. He was God's spokesman. She wouldn't, Jezebel wasn't that crazy. She knows that God will. Deal with her. No, 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 no. He just, she just wanted to embarrass him. Just wanted to make him look like a coward in front of the whole nation. But he didn't look at it that way. We get depressed because we exaggerate the negative. The fact is, Elijah wasn't the only one. Look at verse 17. 7,000 prophets who still haven't given in to false religion. That's how many I got, Elijah, that the Lord says there. There were plenty of other people. Elijah was exaggerating. Not only we always do these things, focus on, not only do we focus on our feelings and not the facts, we exaggerate the negative, but, but we also blame ourselves for negative events that we are not responsible for, that they are not our fault. We get depressed when we compare ourselves with other people. They are not you and you are not them. Stop comparing yourself with other people because all you'll do is find yourself in the blues, living in the blues. 
living with the blues, living down in the dumps. So what, what is God's remedy for Elijah's depression? Same remedy for your depression. First of all, take care of your physical needs. Look at verse 5. And Elijah laid down under the tree, and he fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals, a jar of water. He ate and he drank, and he laid down again. Then the angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat. The journey is too much for you. So he got up and he ate and he drank and, he's, and he was strengthened by the food. God's remedy for Elijah is the same remedy for you. Number one is rest and get food. It's relaxation. Sometimes a good night's sleep works wonders for your attitude every day. When you are physically tired or fatigued or you're mentally drained, physically exhausted, you're prone to depression. We all are. The things I like about this, God did some wonderful thing. It's the way he handled this, the way he dealt tenderly with Elijah. This man has just copped out on God. He had just given up on God. Yet God did not come to him scolding him and stuff like, you coward. What are you doing over there? What in the world are you doing in this desert? He didn't put him down. He didn't criticize him. He didn't condemn him. What he did was give him some food, some rest. He got him to store him physically. That, that was the starting point. Maybe if you're depressed, the starting point is to get your life in shape physically. Maybe. You just need to watch your diet. Some of y'all don't want to hear that. Maybe you need to get more sleep. The physical thing is the first thing God takes care of. What is God's remedy for Elijah? Same remedy for your depression he had for Elijah. Take care of your physical. And then number two, don't suppress your frustration. Tell them to God. Look at verse 9 and 10. Then Elijah went into a cave. Don't suppress your, frust your frustration. Tell them to God. Verse 9 and 10. Then Elijah went into a cave. And he spent the night. The word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been zealous for the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down the altars to put all of your prophets to death by sword. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me. Look at Elijah. He just poured out his little old heart, his inner feelings. God let him do it. God let him let steam off. God's not shocked by what he says. God says when you're uptight, let me hear your inner emotions. When you're uptight, he says, God says, I already know what they are, but it helps you. I'm, I'm not going to be shocked by them. God says, let me hear your inner emotions. He allowed Elijah to express pent-up emotions without criticizing or condemning him. Hallelujah. Sometimes it helps to have a Christian friend to share with. It's a cleansing, a venting. All that stuff that's been pushed down inside is going to cause depression if you don't release it. Notice the six emotions that Elijah, hit, Elijah went through. He had verse 3, he says, Elijah was afraid. How many of you tonight are? How many of you are afraid? Elijah had fear. In verse 4, he had resentment. He said, I'm fed up with this. Then he said, I'm no better than my ancestors. That, that, that was low self-esteem. A lot of people during these times have a low self-esteem. He, he felt guilt. Then verse 10 says, I've worked hard for nothing. He was angry.
angry. Some people have moved beyond those other emotions and now you're just downright angry. Then the last part of verse 10, he says, I'm all alone. He was lonely. Then he said, and they are trying to kill me. Then he said, they're, they're, they're trying to kill me. He was worried when you take fear and resentment and guilt and low self-esteem and anger and loneliness and worry and you ask, what's wrong with me? Why am I depressed? Look at all these things you've been through. And God just let him spew it all out. Don't hold it in, spew it out. He, he just said, Elijah, what's bugging you? What's on your chest? What, what's frustrating you? God just let him spill it all out. Sometimes that's what we need to do. <clears throat> Number one, take care of your spiritual needs. I mean, that may be the only problem you have that's causing your depression. Number two, don't try to hold in all that stuff, those emotions. You either find a friend and share them with, with, with the Lord. Or just tell them to the Lord. Don't, don't repress it. Don't just express it. Don't just suppress it, but confess it to the Lord. Confess it to the then. What? To the Lord, what do I do with my depression? How do I defeat my depression? Same way Elijah did. Number three, get a fresh awareness of God's awareness in your life. Get a fresh awareness of God's awareness in your life. Verse 11. Verse 11 says, the Lord says to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of God. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful Wind tore the mountain up for a while and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, that was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, the Bible says he put, a, put his cloak over his face because he knew it was God. He knew it was the Lord. And he went out and stood in the mouth of the cave. God says to Elijah, I've got something for you to see. Come out here. Elijah stood there. And God put on a fireworks show. First, he did a wind thing, and then he did an earthquake thing, and then he, he did a fire thing. It was... He was showing God's tremendous power to Isaiah, or to Elijah. He was, showing, he was showing Elijah how powerful he was and that he was with him and that no power can defeat his power. He was reminding him of all the things that his power had done for him. An interesting thing about it that it says that God wasn't speaking to Elijah in any of those. Not those, not the fire, not the earthquake, not the wind. But really got Elijah's attention was the still small voice. God usually speaks to us through a, with a still, quiet voice. Well, we are still in quiet, not in some big dramatic demonstration of fire, of power. God reminds Elijah that I'm right by your side. He's beside him. You get depressed, let me tell you what you do. You get along with God and you read your Bible and you meditate on his word and you spend time with him. Let me tell you, that Bible, that word is like medicine for your soul. It'll lift depression off you better than anything I know in my life. And then number four, let God give you a new purpose and a new direction for your life. Verse 15. Let God give you a new purpose and a new direction for your life. Sometimes that's all we need to lift the load of depression off our lives. Verse 15. The Lord came to Elijah and said, go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. And when you get there, here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to, to anoint this king and anoint this king. And he, said, he gave him a new assignment. He put him back to work. Sometimes 
Lots of the time, that's all we need to do is to get busy doing something. The quickest way to defeat depression is to quit sitting around and self-pity. Get your eyes off your self. Start looking at the needs of other people. Get involved in their lives. Get a ministry where you are giving out and God is giving back to you. God gave Elijah a new assignment, a new job. He said, I'm not through with you yet. The job that I'm giving you is going to help people. It's also going to de defeat your depression. Well, may God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, help us to have a new awareness of your presence in our life. Help us to know that you are here with us. Help us to accept it even when we don't feel it. Some, some of us need to take the first step of faith. Somebody listening tonight or whatever time they're listening they need to invite Jesus Christ into the life, into the mind, into the heart, into the body. Say this with me. Jesus, become real to me. Take the sin of control of my life. Guide me. Help me. Help me to see life your way and not my way. Give me a new purpose and a new direction. I want you to save me today. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. If you prayed that prayer, then you are, you are saved. And then you need to get down. You need to get some spiritual counseling. You need to get, call our church. You can email us. You can Facebook us. Whatever you need to do, let us know so we can do what we can to help you on your spiritual journey. Got some things we want to put in your hand. Got some things we want to help you with. Help you grow to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, we love you. We're praying for you. Rise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon you. See you next time.